Here we're gonna look at two problems from the 2015 Finnish Mathematical Olympiad. They are both from the open division. The first one is a geometry problem from round one and it is question three. So let's look at it. So let's consider equilateral triangle ABC and let P be a point on the shorter arc of AC which is part of the circumcircle of that equilateral triangle ABC. And then the goal is you want to show that the length of the line segment PB is equal to the length of the line segment, segment PA plus the length of the line segment PC. So I've already gotten a picture started. So we've got our equilateral triangle ABC and a circle around ABC. And notice that P is supposed to be a point on the shorter arc of AC. So notice there's a long arc of AC and there's a short arc of AC. And it says that P needs to be on the short arc. So it'll be right here. Great. And now the next thing we want to do is notice that our goal is to look at all the length of these line segments involving P and the vertices of the triangle. So let's draw those line segments in here. So here's line segment PA, here's line segment PC, and then here's line segment PB. Great, and notice that line segment PB crosses line segment AC and let's call that point of intersection D. Great. And now we're going to use a fact from geometry. So notice that angle ACB has arc AB, and angle APB has the same arc, but that means that these two angles are congruent. And so let's just reiterate here, angle ACB has this arc AB, and then angle APB also has this arc AB. That makes them the same angle measure, but we know that this is an equilateral triangle, so we know that this is 60 degrees, but that tells us that this is also 60 degrees. Great. Then, again, we know that this is an equilateral triangle, so this angle BAC is also 60 degrees. The next thing we want to notice is that triangle ABD and triangle ABP are similar by the angle, angle, angle theorem. So notice they both have this angle of 60 degrees. And then furthermore, they share this angle up here, but that makes their third angle congruent as well. And angle, angle, angle doesn't give us congruence of triangles, it gives us similarity of triangles. So let's go ahead and write that down. So by the angle, angle, angle theorem for similarity of triangles, we have, so I'll write it like this, triangle A, B, D is similar to triangle A, P, B. Okay, good. So similarity of triangles gives us the same ratio between side lengths. So that tells us that the ratio of A, P to A, D is the same thing as the ratio BP to AB. So let's go ahead and write that down. So we have AP to AD is the same thing as BP to AB. Great. And then for a similar reason to this argument, we have this angle right here is also equal to 60 degrees, which makes this triangle PBC, so let's write that, PBC is similar to this triangle DBC. But what that tells us is that we also have uh, equal ratio of side lengths, and in this case we'll use the fact that side length PC divided by side length DC is equal to side length PB divided by side length BC, but notice side length BC is the same length as side length AB, so I'll just go ahead and write that down instead. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is clear the AD from the denominator in this one and the DC from the denominator in this one. So that's going to give me the length AP is equal to the length BP divided by the length AB times the length of AD. And then similarly here, we'll have the length of PC is equal to the length of PB divided by the length of AB times the length of DC. Great. 
but now we can add both sides of the equation. So that gives us the length of AP, but I'm gonna write that as PA plus the length of PC. Notice that's the right-hand side of our goal equation is going to be equal to the length of PB, which I can factor out of the whole thing, and then times the length of AD plus the length of CD all over the length of AB. But now notice that the length of AD plus the length of DC is the same thing as the length of AC, but because this is an equilateral triangle, the length of AC is the same thing as the length of AB, so that means this whole thing right here is equal to one, which leaves us exactly with our goal expression for this problem. Okay, I'll clean up the board and we're gonna look at a nice algebra type problem. Now we're gonna look at another question from the same exam. This time it's round two, question one. So we wanna look for all non-negative real solutions to this equation, the square root of one plus, the square root of one plus x equals the cube root of x. So we'd like to denest the square root over here, and maybe a way to do that would be some substitution. So let's go ahead and set y equal to the square root of one plus x. But notice that tells us that y squared equals one plus x, which tells us that x equals y squared minus one. Okay, now we can plug that into our original equation. So we have the square root of one plus y, that's what the left-hand side becomes, equals the cube root of y squared minus one. Now we wanna think of a way to get rid of all of these radicals. And the best way to do it is notice that the least common multiple of two and three is six. So we can raise each of these to the sixth power. So now notice raising a square root to the sixth power means that we're gonna have one plus y cubed left over because we have one plus y to the six over two. And then raising a cube root to the sixth power means we're gonna have y squared minus one squared because we have six over three. Now we, what we wanna do is factor this interior with the difference of squares. That gives us y minus one squared times y plus one squared after distributing that squared onto both terms. Now what we can do is divide both sides by y plus one squared, and that's gonna take this down to a first power, and that leaves us with the equation one plus y equals, now we can multiply that out, y squared minus two y plus one, which simplifies uh, very quickly to y squared minus three y equals zero, which tells us that either y is equal to zero or y is equal to three. Now notice if y is equal to zero, that's gonna make x equal to negative one, but that's not a non-negative solution. But then if y equals three, that leaves x as nine minus one or x equals eight. And that is indeed our only non-negative solution. Okay, that's a good place to stop.